Okay, YouTube, as promised, um, here's the hydrogen system um, installed on the truck. Uh, this is the electronics box. Um, and this is a 2000 model Chevrolet Silverado with that uh, 326 V8 in it. Um, not a lot of room to work underneath the hood. Um, the mount is a pretty simple little mount. It's a half inch um, piece of um, steel pipe um, with some flange fittings in it tie it to the frame and support the uh, controls the top side where I can have easy access to it. Um, the hydrogen reactor itself, and it's kind of a pain to get them in here, but right in behind the battery, uh, you have to remove the battery and you have to remove the battery tray. Uh, but I've managed to locate a 32 plate cell um, that's about, oh, it's maybe 14 inches tall and overall height by 4x4 four four squared. Uh, it fits tight, but nonetheless, it's, uh, it works really well. Uh, and there's just not a whole lot of, uh, lot of area on the truck that you could put stuff. The uh, uh, container that uh, will maintain the level of electrolyte in the uh, reactor is mounted... Uh, up here by the windshield wiper motor. Uh, the supply line runs across, goes into a bubbler here, and then it comes back across here with a flash suppressor located just probably about six inches away from where it goes in in front of the Ventura. Um, this really works better than um, how I originally had it was back here, which is a perfect place directly into the middle of the intake manifold. Um, however, this seems to regulate uh, via that big butterfly um, much better than, than directly into the manifold. Uh, as far as the cooling, the 12 volt pump is mounted down here on the radiator shroud. I don't know if you can see it very well. Like I said, not a lot of room to work. And the cooling tower is mounted, uh, I found a nice neat little place, again really tight, uh, I had to make a few mounts, but it mounted in in front of the grill really well, and actually will do a better job of cooling uh, than in my simulated environment in the shop, um, I was not able to get 60 mile an hour worth of air across it, and it did a phenomenal job there, so I'm sure it'll do fine in this application. We move around to the uh, cab of the truck. The main controls, again, we don't have a whole lot of room to work. Um, I've mounted an ammeter um, right above. This was a blank block off plate. I think it's used for maybe something with a four wheel drive on a four wheel drive model. Uh, neat little um, ammeter that mounted in here. This is a switch that provides the power to run the, I've got a big 3,000 watt inverter. Um, that's my printer, mounted underneath the printer. Um, you can see it that well. This is my work truck, so all my tools and stuff are in here. But uh, that works out really well. I've been able to utilize that to uh, power tools and stuff at sites that don't have um, 110 volts. Uh, I've been contemplating the idea of running one side of the 120 volt output of this into a uh, bridge converter and knock it back over to direct current through a pulse modulator and maybe try 80 to 90 volts DC to the reactor cell. As far as the controls for the oxygen sensor and the MAP sensor, they're located down here. This was like a cassette um, I think it, it held cassette tapes back in there, and I've just built a little block off plate. This is actually what would um, uh, bring on the oxygen um, enhancer. This is what would adjust the signal to it. Uh, green light just tells me the unit's on. This is the primary switch to bring on the um, reactor, and this is the switch that powers the pump if the reactor tends to draw too much electricity, gets, gets too hot. So guys, that's pretty much it. That's where I'm at with this, and I'll keep you posted on how things go. Peace.